Do your hair a favor by checking in online and arriving just in time for your Sport Clips MVP haircut experience while you surround yourself with sports on TV. Great cut, massaging shampoo, and hot steam towel. Claim your spot today. Sportclips.com slash check-in. Hey, hey, glad you're with us. Skola and Wingo, ESPN Radio and ESPN News, live from the District Winery in Washington, D.C. <laughs> We are glad you are here with us as we are here in our nation's capital getting ready to celebrate the Major League All-Star Game and the All-Star Break Home Run Derby coming up tonight. Presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Penzoil Performance Line. It is 8 o'clock in the morning, and I think the humidity is peaking at 4,000%. Uh, Mike Golick, Mike Golick, Jr., Trey Wingo. Delighted to be joined now. I... MLB Network Analyst Al Leiter, give him a hand Thank on you. studio. Thank you. Giving us the Straight Talk. Good morning. You by Straight Talk Wireless. How beautiful Best is this? Yeah, yeah, Watch nice. you guys, that setting right there. Yeah. Which is boat very, is yours, nice. by the way, back there? As we're looking over the Potomac River, there's some big ones uh, Is there a little there. dinghy out there? That, no! yeah, that's where I went. Bada bing. Yeah. We got mm-hmm. our second dinghy joke of the morning. <laughs> there you go. So better than a triple shot of espresso. Ladies Here it is right here. You need that? Uh, yeah. We're good. Well, I'm working. Al, I don't know if you know this. I'm usually a diet soda guy, so I'm trying to transition from uh, diet soda to coffee, and I'm in the pro- I'm beginning to trust the process. That's and how's that working out for you? It's a process. It's a process. I don't know if he's enjoying the, well, it as much as Well, the fly in my espresso right coffee? now will yeah. be. Oh, yeah. I'm going to put big, that one down. Big, co- big coffee guy. It's the only way I can survive these kind of these kind of morning show shifts. Yeah. yeah. As my Twitter profile says, not really a morning person. Yeah. So yes. we're working on that. Slowly but surely. We're trying. getting there. Uh, this hour of Golik and Wingo is brought to you by La Quinta Inns and Suites. Book at LQ.com and win at business. We'll get into a lot with Al, but first we've got to do what we always do to start a segment, start an hour, and that is talk about what's trending. This is important. Oh, God, destroy that. Uh, congratulations to France. They beat Croatia 4-2 to win the World Cup. France wins its second World Cup title with a 4-2 win over Croatia. Yeah, and Mbappe gets a goal. He's uh, the only teenager since 1958 in Pele to score in a World Cup final. And Pele scored twice, I believe, uh, in that game. France gets an, uh, Croatia an own goal against them. Then they get France gets the penalty shot off the handball on a corner kick, something that the Croatian manager did not think was the proper call. Uh, we'll get more into that when we get our, our resident goalie, Shaka, uh, on Shaka. the show, uh, his lap a little later on the show. But uh, then uh, France goes for two goals in the second half and just absolutely ice this one away. Croatia used to playing some extra time, used to coming back from behind, but this definitely. I said a little too much this time around, Mike. Yeah, a little bit too much this time around. And I think for any sporting event, if you can go through it and have your marquee young superstars come out and show out on the big stage, you walk away saying this is a win. The World Cup needs no help getting a draw. But to have someone like Mbappe emerge through this for an audience like ours that was coming into this without a dog in the fight because America wasn't involved in this World Cup, was searching for a reason, and you get a young guy like this that now you have that name association and recognition going forward for the next decade where he'll continue to be a star. It's a it's a great net result coming out of this. And you mentioned Mbappe, the great tweet yesterday. Uh, Liberté, égalité, fraternité, and Mbappe. It's, a, it's yeah. the way they're celebrating in France all the way on. Hey, are we talking about the World Cup? Yes, we are. Hey! Hey! And that means congratulations yeah. Thank to you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Uh, you won our Fantasy World Cup only because it, it isn't coming home. English, the three lines, they let me down. But you dominated. Not yeah. only did you win the title game, you also cleaned up in the third place game. Yeah, I did. Uh, we had two points on that game. Belgium beat England, so I was up seven going into the uh, France-Croatia final. And Mike and Devin, who I was going against, they were down seven. So a Croatia win would have had us tied for the title. Then we were going to actually do PKs uh, to decide the title since we fell in love with the PKs. But... France wins that one, so I destroyed everybody. I won by 14, but I'm still willing to take you and Devin on in PKs just to show that the old man has still got it. Well, I would hope so. Again, I grew up you know, hoping that my father wasn't a coward and believing that for so many years, so I don't want that to change now. Wow. It's unbelievable. Wow, the disrespect. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I'm just saying uh, he's, you know, he's a very confident man. I want him to have confidence in himself that he can go out there and try an effort to stop my Al, opinion. this is it's why you should happen. never have kids because no that's kidding. what they do. They turn on you. They well, turn I was on wondering you. how this dynamic is going to play out. Oh, I'm yeah. thinking by my son sitting there. What, at what point do you uh, say, hey, whoa, whoa, stop? Yeah. No, I, well, I let them go because yeah. that's when I get a nap. They just yell at each other for about 10 minutes, and then I get refreshed. So yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, all, I'm all good with them going in as hard as they want to against each other. Just I'm figuring neither one of you played soccer. 
Uh, uh, no, we did not. Yeah. I usually tended to stick to the goal a lot. I was a chubbier kid, so it allowed me to yeah. move as little as possible there when you I go. was there. That was the way to go. It's exactly <laughs> right. Play to your strengths. I'm just curious, as a baseball guy, and obviously who's very busy during the World Cup because you're doing the the play by the, the, you know, the games every night, how much did you get into the World Cup, if at all? I, I do like the World Cup. Uh, a few years ago when I retired, uh, I went to England. My family's from England, my mother's side, so for obvious reasons I was disappointed that England didn't make it to the finals. Um, I just you. love the rally of, even if you're not a, a soccer fan, even if you don't really understand the little nuance, boy, how could you not get sucked up in the whole yeah. national pride of every yeah. every country? And it, It's cool. Yeah, it, it captivated me. It it, it's an amazing thing. Look, we always crow about, uh, and, and rightfully so because it's the most watched thing in this country. The yes, Super Bowl is. is watched by 100-plus million yeah. people. 1.2 billion people worldwide. 1.2 billion yeah. watch the World Cup final. It is just, it is such a global dynamic that we are just sort of beginning to understand uh, here in this country. All right, we continue with what's trending. Tiger Woods uh, playing at the Open Championship this week in Carnoustie, saying it is the most difficult open course, and it is baked brown. Brant Snedeker put out a tweet yesterday, guys. On the 18th hole, he had a drive of 427 yards. There's been oh. very little water. It is un- unusually warm temperatures. We saw that at Wimbledon, and the fairways are like cement. The ball is rolling forever. This is the, the tournament I like watching the most. I mean, I understand yeah. the Masters and what that means, U.S. Open, for, for our country, but the Open in just how difficult that course can be, whether it's it, it's dry and fast like this or whether it's windy and wet and those pot bunkers you have to go. I, I just I love it again because I love it when tournaments humanize yeah. uh, the golfers, you know, and like we, I just saw the, Hills. Well, I just yeah. saw the turn, the last tournament over the weekend. Was it the John Deere? I forgot which one it was. The, think, the, the winner was 26 yeah. under. I mean, come on. I think it was 478 under. Yeah. Yeah, it, it it's ridiculous. like a putt putt course. So, I mean, make it. I, I like it to when, you know, they, they really have to work like they did at the U.S. Open and certainly in, in the Open, we're going to see some people struggle. Yeah, I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed seeing the rush of player complaints about the conditions of courses here, but you're right. You see the visuals of this one and it's just oh. so, I mean, it looks like they're playing on the moon, so it's yeah. been interesting. But you want to talk about the long ball later tonight? A 427 yard tee shot will do it. It's ridiculous. You're a big golfer, right? I golf. You're just <laughs> golf a little bit. Feel like those guys. I will, I'll say this: I got I chance. I uh, golf with John Smoltz right before he qualified for the senior tour. So beat you I, by a few strokes. I, I would shot, imagine. I shot a 93, yeah. and I was beyond thrilled yeah. at my course in New Jersey. Smoltz shot a 73 and was. Ticked, ticked off. off. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? he tells me how he lipped five. And I'm sitting here Dude, at 93 going. But yeah. you know what? You know what's in, you know what I like about that? It's, I think you and you are the same. We enjoyed the round better, right? Yeah. Oh. He was mad about it. As I said, I'm mid nineties, drunk or sober, and I'm having a ball. Yeah. It doesn't matter to me. So yeah. get those wine yeah. vats open. That's Let's exactly go. Right. That's so true. you enjoyed your ninety oh, three. Totally. It's fantastic. I've accepted that. Yes. I, this is who I am. There's yes. no like trying to shave yep. my, shave points here. Look, Carnoustie is just a fantastic course. I had the chance to play it in 2015 when we were covering the Open at St Andrews. It's impossible. We played 18 holes and out all four seasons in 18 holes, yeah. and the monsoons came down on the 18th green. The last time. Uh, the Open Championship was played when it was this sort of baked. was 2013 at Muirfield. I'll never forget this. Uh, it's either the 10th or 11th hole. Uh, Tiger Woods was 280 yards away. He had a five iron, and it flew the green. I mean, that's – it Ridiculous. landed 40 yards short, and it rolled over the green. And they went to shot a Tiger. He shrugged. His, what am I supposed to do? I hit Is a five technology? iron. What, what happened? Well, well the, the, listen, a lot of it's the ball, but also when the when – the, the ground is that hard. It just It's going to bounce and just going to go. It's I like mean, getting out the cart path all yeah, the but time. Exactly. <laughs> but I mean, the guys, Gary anyway. Player and the Trevino and Ben Hogan, those guys, they weren't ever playing in dry. Well, no. The, uh, listen, the equipment's gotten much better, but it's, it's basically the ball is, is a little more juice than it's ever yeah. been. There's some people like Jack and, and, and Gary pro- uh, proposed, let them let play two golf balls, a competitive golf ball well, like on the PGA Tour and, and where the pros play and a – and uh, a, a ball similar to what they're playing now for average golfers like you and me. Oh. So we'll see if that plays out. And we continue what's trending. This is important. No, it isn't. This, uh, one, was, is. this one actually <laughs> yeah. is important. Today is the deadline day where if you don't get uh, a deal done, a long-term deal, you're playing under that franchise tag. And the, the, of the four that are out there, the biggest one, obviously, is Steelers running back Le'Veon Bell. Uh, Mike, Mike Tomlin, the head coach of the Steelers, says he's optimistic, but Adam Schefter is not so optimistic they'll get a long-term deal done. Yeah, and, and I don't think Le'Veon's going to hold out. He's going to make his 14.5, but then it's going to bring up the question for next year as, as a free agent because they won't do this three times. It'll cost him too much of what he's going to do. And you wonder, Mike, with younger running backs – 
Will they get those long-term deals, or do you keep them on the one-year deals? Because their their life expectancy gets used up awful quick, but it's such an important position now between what he does and what David Johnson does and what Todd Gurley does. Two guys that are coming up the ranks waiting to see what a guy like Le'Veon is going to sign for, so that kind of sets the market. And Pittsburgh knows they're going to have to set the market, but they don't want to set the market too high. Zeke Elliott, Saquon Barkley, who's coming into the league now saying a lot of the same things about the position that Le'Veon Bell's been saying, really wanting to go out on a limb and try and set the market for this group of guys all with these special skill sets coming up but I'm with you I think the deal right now what's at stake here is Le'Veon's future in Pittsburgh because after the season if he becomes a free agent all of a sudden gets to hit the open market and has this in mind that Pittsburgh has had these chances to sign him long term and they for whatever reason have found one reason or another to not go ahead and pull the trigger on it so you have to imagine that at some point the it's not business it's personal line ends up creeping into this. Look he'll be 27 in February this is his sixth season and then you wonder to that point if you didn't give him a contract when he was 25 or 26 what makes you think you're going to give him a four-year deal when he's 27 years old right uh i find it hard to believe that he won't play under the franchise tag today because i don't know many people that are willing to walk away from 14 million dollars and he said that he won't hold out during yeah. the season he went on his instagram a while ago and said he's not going to miss games but it'd probably look like what happened last year where he didn't sign his franchise tag till five days before the season and then we'll see if somebody will front load a contract for him for the first two years and and because, you know, with those contracts, they're not like Major League Baseball contracts. They're done in disappearing ink. The first two or three years of the deal and the guaranteed money are the only things that really matter. Okay, we continue Golik and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN News here in D.C. for the Major League All-Star break. Outlider from the Major League Baseball Network, a 19-year veteran of Major League Baseball, is here with us, three-time World Series champ, two-time All-Star. By the way, just had a Little League field name after you. Congratulations. That Thank had to you. be nice, right? Where yes. was that? Uh, Berkeley Township, New yeah. Jersey, yeah. my hometown. And uh, big honor. But listen, I, I had uh, I, my one brother played 11 years in the big leagues. Another brother played six years of professional baseball. It all started, you know, I don't know where, you know, how you describe the beginning of your football right, days, right. but it was on some field in your hometown. And it was an honor. They renamed the complex after uh, my family. But what, what professional athlete hasn't started in the Little League. We all start there in the Little League. So that's got to be a cool thing because that's what I'm – when people go into the Hall of Fame or you hear some sort of of, of um, speech about their career, I always like hearing about the start of it more than we can see stats and all that, but where it all began and how much fun you had, whether it was with your dad, your brother, sisters, whatever it was. So – to that point, I forget what year it was. I was when I was with the Mets, and we were sitting around in, in spring training, and it was Piazza and Ventura and Zeal and the others. And many of our stories, they weren't about the World Series. They weren't about the All Star Game at, at in DC. Most every story we were talking about was Little League, a high school championship game. You know, really the back to the essence of what I hate to say this, but when it really was fun, right? Yeah. As opposed to the job. A business. Yeah. It was a business, and. You know, that's where it is. That's why, you know, talking to kids, and maybe the one kid is this big and the other kid right. is this big, like, keep playing, have fun doing it, really. And, and I think listening to that, so much of the showcase about the All-Star Game is about what it does for young fans and the showcase for kids. I, I'm curious, do you remember back then when you were playing, was there a moment where you thought, man, this is what I, this is the game I want to play for the rest of my life? This is that defining moment early in your As a little big league? leaguer? Or no, as I, I mean, as a little leaguer coming up there when you kind of realized baseball was going to be your love. Yes. When, when after the Little League game uh, that we would win the game, if we won the game, they would pick a uh, MVP of the game. And we would go to Dairy Queen, and the MVP of the, the game got something other than a cone. That's how I got fat. Uh, <laughs> man, so there was, it started early on. <laughs> Who's going to get the banana split? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Listen, motivation comes in many forms. And it's interesting that you tell that story in light of what's going on in Baltimore right now with Manny Machado, who was held out of the game because of field conditions. And Buck Showalter, the manager, pretty much shot it straight after the game saying, look, Obviously, guys, we all know what's going on here. They didn't want to play him, risk injury, and thus risking his trade value be diminished, right? That, that's exactly where we are. It shows, sort of is the polar opposite of what you were just talking about. Yes, exactly. Yeah, listen, it's a big business. You know, Certainly the contracts that we see that are out there, Manny Machado is going to be one of them. So I, I think, look, you know, I don't know what the Orioles thought that their roster was come uh, spring training leaving Sarasota. Um, you know, <laughs> I don't know what they're going to get for a guy for whoever's going to loan him for three months, assuming that they can't sign him long term. I think that the Orioles are definitely in a box. 
Where does he end up? I don't know. I know the, the handicap in L.A., maybe Milwaukee. Right, right. I know Milwaukee's been talked about. Uh, the Yankees, the, the Phillies, you know, are, kicking Yan- the tires. Yankees really need a pitcher, though, so you wonder. A couple. Uh, and, and, yeah. And, so so I, that's to go – here we're talking about the possibility of 100 uh, or maybe two 100-win teams having to play one game to keep going in the playoffs, which, which is crazy. But talk about this part of the year now for teams that are in it and teams that know that aren't in it and kind of the mentality of the player. So it depends on where you are in your career. You know, I, I think a, a young player who's still trying to establish himself as a major leaguer, they're oblivious to it, right? I mean, every, every game could potentially could be – a game in which you get sent down. So that, that's different. I, I think as a veteran guy, if you've been in postseason and you're on a team that looks like you're a have-not and it looks like you're going to be a seller, I have to admit, it, it's difficult at times for those players, especially if they've been to a World Series, knowing that it, there's going to be a sell-off and you're not part of it. Because that's really what you look at. I mean, if we look at the the, the, uh, the standings and see where the teams are, you know, there's, there's a discernible line with those that are going to be selling – or you know, retooling is like a lot of teams don't yeah, want to make rebuilding. It like, yeah, yeah they, well, yeah, resurfacing, uh, remodeling. But listen, I, I think you know, so long as there's stories out there with lower payroll teams that have actually got on and play, uh, got in the postseason, also win. You know, I think there's always that hope that Kansas City, you know, what they did a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. and certainly Cleveland's never high up right. in uh, payroll. Uh, I think what the A's are doing out in Oakland, uh, you know, the lowest payroll in baseball, they're three games out of a playoff spot. Yeah. But that is a problem, I think, when it when it comes down to potentially there could be the two best teams, uh, you know, with the second place finish in the East, AL East, and that you know that team is going to have to play a one game playoff, and you're at the mercy of one pitcher right. that dominates. Yeah, and and right now that would be the Yankees because they the Yankees and Red Sox have the two best records in all of baseball. Al Leiter with us, uh, Major League Baseball Network analyst. By the way, did work for us a, a few years ago back in the day, and I have to say you guys would appreciate this. Did a baseball tonight with Al, and the first thing he did, he brought in donuts. He brought in donuts for everybody. So he uh-huh. was really yeah, on this show know. before so, he was actually ever on this show. That uh-huh. is, he, he was there yes. in spirit. So I did the Bristol thing, you know, yeah. come up for the postseason, and it's late, and everybody's sitting around. I said, well, we got to get something out there. And I <laughs> sent out, like, boxes of donuts. And it's it was a beautiful think, thing. It was a good night. Yeah. Let, let's just say but not we, for you. you. You're down. Uh... I'll, I'll still enjoy a donut or two, believe me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can say, the rally donuts are always appreciated. Right. Right. Yeah. And that show, by the way, baseball tonight was great for the first 10 minutes, and then the sugar crush fell, and <laughs> yeah. we were toast. <laughs> we were completely toast. Uh, speaking of toast, I do want to ask you about something that happened over the weekend. Mike Matheny fired as the Cardinals manager six seasons never had a losing record went to the playoffs four straight years didn't make it the last two seasons what did you make of them uh, firing Matheny in an attempt to salvage their season wow so you have to look at the organization as a whole they hadn't done it since uh, Joe Torrey to- Joe Torrey prior right. to Tony La Russa years ago so don't know anything about it I, I would assume that there was some uh, tension or considerable tension between the uh, the powers to be upstairs it did seem a little unusual because, as you just set it up, uh, Trey, he's, uh, you know, they've won. The yeah. fact that they haven't uh, been in the postseason the last three years, uh, this, is a, this, is a, this is a baseball town. No lie. It, I, you know, it's one of the few places where when you're a visiting player, you go in and you're, you're ready for somebody. It's either a group of fans or, or one. St. Louis never, I promise you, whatever uniform I was wearing, you come into that place at, at the old Bush Stadium, very complimentary. Of, of other players, polite, and they love their Cardinals. So, you know, obviously uh, somewhere along the line, Mr. DeWitt felt like this was the right time. So right. One, one of the big things going on or starting to be discussed in the game is the defensive shift. David Ortiz says it probably cost him 500 hits and is taking the fun out of the game. Not shocking hearing that coming from a hitter. What do you think about the thought of changing that rule and not letting defenses shift? So, I would I, listen, the baseball – Unlike the other sports, they, they take their time, which I think is, is right. It, they're very deliberate. Every single rule change or anything that ha- is modified, people go up in arms, right? You know, they go crazy football and other sports are changing dramatically. I, what I had hoped, and, and I say it on some of the games that I do when I work uh, for the Yes Network and the Yankees, I do a handful of games. I would think at some point, as a hitter, if, if Big Poppy's saying he's getting 500 hits and his career stolen because he keeps pulling it, why don't you just thank you dribble one to the left side? Thank you. And I've said that to a couple big leagues. I couldn't hit. I was a pitcher. I enjoyed standing in the box. I stunk. But if there was a huge hole on the left side, all I had to do was just 
con- just make contact. Dribble it. If you dribble it hard enough as a lefty and they're playing on the right side, you may even have a double. What did they say to you when you said this? To that's just my hit. swing. I get paid to hit home runs. I get paid to drive the ball. See, that's a, that's, so, that's a cop out to me. If you want to be a great, average, find all, all areas of the field. And what would it do? I remember I remember uh, Craig Biggio. Every single time his first at bat, I shouldn't say every single time, but most of the time, his first at bat of the game, he, at the old Astrodome or even at, at the uh, at a minute, minute, minute. He, he'd, he'd fake down and uh, pull the bunt. And immediately the opposing manager goes like this to the third baseman. Come on. Hey, hey, he might bunt. Exactly. And I don't know how many hits Craig Biggio got at, with the Houston Astros of, of dribbling a hard three hopper through the hole because the third baseman's in. Right. So – to negate on that, yeah. God damn, just hit it over there. Thank you. Yeah, I said this to Mark Teixeira. Yeah, You're, you know he's doing yeah. a great job for you guys. Uh-huh. I said, do me a favor, fifty-six times in your first at bat, if nobody's on base, but yeah. we'll be ta- It'll be on Good Morning America, be on the Today <laughs> Show, it'll be beyond just ESPN. But fifty-six times we'll be talking about Joe DiMaggio. Here's a big guy that hits thirty-five home runs, and you bunted fifty-six times in a row. That'd be cool. Yeah. And he's, like, you know, they just, it's no, yeah. no, you know, that's it's over there. I'm like, yeah, but look at take it. You're adva- not batting four hundred. Yeah. Take advantage of what they're giving you, and they're literally giving it, to you, giving right? it to you. They're literally giving it to you. If you want to be one of the all-time greats, spray it all over the field. I, you know what? I appreciate too, by the way, Al coming in here and being you know kind and deferential. The guy did have a double in a World Series game. Yeah, he so. did. Yeah, he did. Let that go on. Notice for nah, come on. Wait a minute. Thank you for bringing that up. This is funny. <laughs> oh, so boy. it's 10 years because there was no interleague play back in 1993. So yeah. I, I had some arm troubles early on with, yep. the, with the Yankees and blister problems. So I, I, I finally get up. Uh, I, have, I have a pretty good year. In the World Series, my first at bat 10 years prior was a high school game where everybody bats <laughs> like three. Oh, yeah. yeah, whatever. I, I wasn't very good. And it was the first pitch. So immediately as the game's going on, Todd Stottlemyre started the game. It was game four. And I'm, I run down to warm up because he was having a struggle. He struggled. I come in. And uh, you just don't think about hitting back then. American League, in minor league stadiums, you've never hit. You never hit anywhere. So I looked around. He's like, you're on deck. I'm like, I'm on deck. I use, I use uh, Ed Sprague's bat. I had Ola Root's helmet. <laughs> I had, I had um, uh, Ricky Henderson's gloves. I have all of this. So you got a lot of mojo working for you. So the eighth batter, I don't know, I forget who was in there, grounds out. And I, they're like, get up. And I was like, ah, you know, and I'm standing there at the, at the vet. Roger Mason on the mound, nice right-hander. Whoop, he throws it. Whack, first one. Terrible swing. Down the left field line, past Thompson. John Truck is trailing the play <laughs> to second base, and I have a stand-up double. He turns to me, and Crocky is the only way Crocky oh, is. Oh, yeah. You beep, beep, beep. This is not that easy. I turned to Crucky. Now, Crucky wasn't having a very good series at the time. I think I might have had, like, one less hit than him. And he says, uh, he goes, it's not that easy. What happened? I said, I know, I know. And I'm looking at Crucky on on second base at the World Series. I said, John, I haven't had a bat since 10 years ago in high school. (laughs) Crucky goes bananas because it's not that easy. That's awesome. Crucky's the best, whether it's that or his bailout at the All-Star game a few years ago. It's Randy Johnson, one of the all-time greats. By the way, I'll be part of Major League Baseball's Network All-Star Game coverage beginning today live at 2 from National Spark with MLB Tonight airing live before and after the Home Run Derby in the All-Star game. Al, thanks for stopping by. Al Leiter, everybody. And by the way, no more blessings. The Pickle Brian work. Yeah, no more blisters. Coming up, a controversial call on the world's biggest stage. We'll get to that, Mike. Support for the Golik and Wingo Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Let's talk about buying homes for a minute. Because of rising interest rates, there's a lot of unpredictability when it comes to buying a home these days. It's causing a whole lot of anxiety with folks. Well, our friends at Quicken Loans are doing something about it. They're calling it the power buying process, and here's how it works. Quicken Loans will verify your income, assets, and credit in less than 24 hours to give you a verified approval. This gives you the strength of a cash buy. Then once you're verified, you qualify for their all new exclusive rate shield approval. First, they lock your rate for up to 90 days while you shop. Now here's the best part. If rates go up, your rate stays the same. But if rates go down, your rate also drops. You win either way. It's the kind of thinking you'd expect from America's largest mortgage lender. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Golic. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply. Based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data record, equal housing lender, license in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. Ow, ow. Yep, you guessed it. I'm a speed bump, so I've got one job. I slow you down. So imagine how I feel about Geico, who does way more. 
Like, not only could they save you money on car insurance, but they've been around for over 75 years, giving people fast and friendly claim service. Ow, ow. Plus, they got a nifty mobile app that gives you 24-7 access. Ow, ow. Just doing my job, buddy. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Golgan Wingo with you, presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Pencil Performance Line, live from the District Winery in Washington, D.C. We are glad you're here with us, and we are doing our damnedest to get those wine vats open for the people that are here. <laughs> they could use a chilling beverage, and so could we all, quite frankly. As we need, it's a moment of silence, a little bit. We're a little upset. World Cup is over. Yes, it is. Going to miss it. We really enjoy it. We're going to miss the World Cup. We mm-hmm. are presented by 1-800-Flowers.com. Surprise a friend or loved one today with a bouquet from 1-800-Flowers.com. When you order a dozen multicolored roses for only twenty nine ninety nine, you'll get another dozen absolutely free. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. But it's time for one of our last remaining World Cup updates. Crushed. Hey, hey. For crying out loud. Glad you're with us and Delighted to be joined now by Shaka Hislop, our ESPN FC analyst on the Shell Pennzoil performance line, taking synthetic motor oil performance to a whole new level. Make the switch to Pennzoil Synthetics today. Shaka, it is good to hear you. It is good to see you. First and foremost, you heard in that rejoin, uh, Croatia was robbed of the World Cup. Perhaps a little dramatic. What did you think of the controversial handball decision in the first half? Yeah, you know, Trey, I, I thought it was a penalty kick. And I'm a little bit split. I, I know... That the opinion is split here. On ESPN FC last night, we took a Twitter poll, and, and as we all know, Twitter polls are very scientific, as scientific as we can get in sport, and it was split right down the middle. And I have to say, I fell on the side with the referee. I th- thought Perisic went up, um, extended his arm a little bit, a little bit unnaturally for me. So I, I was on the side of the referee here. But, you know, again, you have a human involved, as much technology as you want to introduce into the equation, you're still going to have these moments of debate. And unfortunately, we had a big moment of debate on the biggest stage. But I think the ref got it right. And and the one thing, listen, that that athletes have to do is when something happens, you just have to move on. So Mm -hmm. they're down 2-1 as Croatia going into the second half. And then France puts a couple of goals on them. How much of that... Uh, Ashaka, in your mind, had to do with what happened at the end of the first half and the possibility of all the time on the pitch just catching up or Croatia with all the extra time they've had in games. Well, Croatia, I've dealt with the extra minutes that they've spent playing this tournament very well. And I'm not, I don't want to put, put it down to, to the extra time that they've played. They've played, as, as we mentioned, their last three games all went, to, went into extra time. But I thought France did an excellent job defensively. You saw that all throughout the knockout stages, in particular against Belgium, who were an incredibly talented team. Yet Didier Deschamps and this French team were able to, to stifle their creativity. Um, players like, uh, like Romelu Lukaku, like Eden Hazard barely got a kick. And I thought that tactically they got it right again against the Croatians. Great goal, again by Paris to get them back in at, at, at 1-1. But then they got, France got the benefit of that call, the penalty converted, and then you saw France tactically just stifle the Croatians. Luka Modric, player of the tournament, deservedly so, barely got a kick in the second half. Even Rakitic had little impact on the game itself. And to put that down to a French team who showed an experience and a maturity that we didn't see them do two years ago in the Euros when they were at home. We knew this French team was incredibly talented, incredibly stacked, but you wondered how they'd handle the big stage. As I mentioned two years ago, I thought they choked in the final. This time around, they matured, they learned from those mistakes, and they didn't make them again. Chaka Hislop with us here on Golik and Wingo. And we talk about maturity and experience, and then we also have to talk about France's young 19-year-old mm. star and Kylian Mbappe, who was sensational through this tournament. And I'm interested. He's a guy who's already a big name on the world stage, has the salary to go along with it. But showing out like this in this sort of event in the World Cup and scoring in the final, what does that mean, and how does that elevate for elevate him going forward? I, I, th- I think it, it elevates him um, to one of the premier stars in, in world football. Look, it, it's, it's been about Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi for quite some time, but Father Time catches up even with, with those two. Neymar seemed to be the heir apparent, and now what we've seen from Kylian Mbappe, not just this tournament, but leading up to it, I think is, has elevated Mbappe almost above Neymar, his teammate in Neymar. 
I know my big criticism about Neymar all tournament is I don't think he handled the stage well. I don't think he handled the exposure. I I I, I thought it it got him a little bit too much, and in in the end, it caught cost not just Brazil but him as a brand. Mbappe came into this tournament saying all the right things, talking about it's about talent, not necessarily about your age. All his his pre-game press conferences. Um, exhibited a level of maturity. He donated all his, his earnings from the French nat- national team right. to charities in France. That kind of sh- assured um, a presence that you don't normally get from a 19-year-old. Combine that with his performances, and if you were to put big money on taking a chance and who's going to be the next star, the heir apparent to Ronaldo and Messi, right now I'm putting my money on Mbappe. Yeah, he's, he was unbelievable. Ashaka Hislop with us, our ESPN FC analyst. So congratulations all due to France and what they were able mm-hmm. to do. But I think, Shaka, people need to understand uh, what this meant for Croatia. And you know, people were on Twitter like, why are they celebrating the fact that they lost? This is, a, this is the second smallest country to ever make it to a World Cup final. A country that wasn't even a country uh, in 1990. Mm-hmm. They became their own country in 1991. Can you put into words what it meant for this team and this country to get to this stage? It, it, it was an incredible achievement. All those things that, that you just mentioned, Trey, new country in the 90s, 4.1 pop million people in, in terms of population. Um, and then add to the fact their struggles in qualifying. They sacked their coach. In the middle of a a two-game playoff, one game to go, they weren't happy with the way things were going, sacked their coach, bring in Nico Dalic, and he somehow orchestrates his team into a to get out of the playoffs and into the tournament. Even then, you're thinking, well, you know, well done, but I don't think you're going to go that far. Drawn in the same group with Argentina and Lionel Messi, you couldn't help but wonder that this team have enough just to get out to the group stage, which I think would have been an accomplishment. But you saw what they did in the group stage, how they dismantled Argentina. Then when they they got into the knockout stage, made harder work maybe than they should have against Denmark, when it went to penalties. Made harder work than they should have against Russia, went to penalties again. And in, in terms of knockout competition, it's not easy. And, and history is against teams who go to penalties twice in succession to, to get out of those penalty kicks at situations both of those times. Did that against the host Russia. Then you go to England, who everybody thought were favourites to, to get the better of them, turned things around after England dominated after 20 minutes and then dominated not just the rest of the 70, but in extra time. And then come up against a French team and I think equip themselves well. The scoreline maybe doesn't reflect how good they were over the course of 90 minutes. But this was an incredible turnaround from a team that struggled to get into the World Cup that nobody thought could probably get out of the group stage to get to the final and make a fist of it. I, I Hats off to Croatia for everything they've done. And you're absolutely right. It should be celebrated. Shaka, uh, we appreciate you being with us this morning. We're going to be in touch with you for our forthcoming penalty kick showdown between the Golics. Mm -hmm. We're going to need your wisdom on this. The worst part about the World Cup ending is not the end of our sounder. It's the end of listening to the dulcet tones of Shaka. I I could listen to you read the air sickness bag on an airplane. I just want you to know that. That's how intriguing I find your voice. Shaka, thanks for being with us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Oh, he's the best. Golic and Wingo on the road. Shocker that we'd be talking about corruption in FIFA, but what was more potentially corrupt in the World Cup? The controversial penalty kick call or Trey fudging the points in our fantasy tourney? Stay Wingo. I got my eye on you, Wingo. You're a little shifty. What? Okay, I... I'm, I'm going to give – oh, go ahead, on. do this. Oh, yeah. yeah. I would say we do have breaking news in the Sports Center oh, yeah, coming we'll, up we'll, in just a second. <laughs> Cliff, that's, that's a cue. Get ready. That Sports Center is brought to you by Dell. Dell Small Business Technology Advisors know there's nothing small about your business. That's why we offer one-on-one partnership and reliable business PCs with Intel Core processors to help you get business done. Call 877 by dell That's 877 by dell Okay, Golik and Wingo here with you on the road, ESPN Radio and ESPN News, live from the District Winery in Washington, in Washington D.C. And we – we have breaking news. 
The wine vats are open, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> rosé. Yeah, rosé all day. So come get a taste, literally, as we are here on Water Street in the District Winery for the Major League All-Star Game festivities. And thankfully, our audience, their thirst can be quenched. Yes, yeah, that's a beautiful thing. It brings us all together. Yes, it does. So we're trying to bring people together. And then there's what's going on at the Pro Football Hall mm, yeah. of Fame. As we all know at this point, Terrell Owens finally got in after a three-year wait. Listen, he should have been a first ballot Hall of Famer. I think we're all clear about that. But he has decided to not show up, becoming the first ever living in Shrinee to basically say to the Hall, yeah, I'm good. So he's going to hold his own ceremony on Saturday afternoon. The, the enshrinement ceremony is Saturday night. We'll see it on ESPN. We'll be there in Canton, Ohio for it. So a lot of people are wondering, well, what do you think about that? And another Hall of Famer wide receiver has weighed in. Michael Irvin agrees with the Pro Football Hall of Fame and what they're doing. They basically decided, and they've said, look, he's not here, so we're going to celebrate the guys that are here. Right. He'll, his picture will be up mm-hmm. uh, on the Hall of Fame banners, and when the class is announced, he'll be there as part of the group, but they won't honor him individually. And this is what Michael Irvin had to say Saturday at the National Fantasy Football Convention. Quote, we can't spend this moment for all these other guys talking about the guy that isn't here. You cannot do that and take that away. He, meaning T.O., is doing his own thing wherever he's doing his own thing, and God bless him. And when they mention the class, they'll mention him, but why should you steal these other guys' moments? Because of his decision on this one. So count Michael Irvin squarely on the Hall of Fame side of this. Mike, where do you weigh in on all of this? Oh, no, listen, I'm fine. You have to acknowledge him. He's in the Hall of Fame. No I don't question. care whether you like him or not. He deserves to be in the Hall of Fame for his play on the field. There's that's no what, debate about that. That's what the Hall of Fame is about. But I, I can understand you don't need to individually reference him or show a video of him or, or display his bust of him individually. Uh, if he's not there, I get it. Just have him included when you mention the, the team, the class that's going in, and in all the materials where the, the group is together. Have him. But, but I, I can understand that listen plus as, as you know well trey that that ceremony is long enough as it is so Fair. if you can save yourself a little bit of time by not going individual on one person so be it but i don't mind the way they're doing it just everybody everybody keep it classy you know what yep. this is the first time this has happened let's be careful the road we go down like i didn't like the road to saying what he's doing this for all the people who have been or will be yeah um w- w- uh, i'm doing this for all the guys who had to wait past present and future see, that, that, that that he goes too far i don't buy it, that for all, one second I, I don't either and by the way i don't think anybody wants to speaking for them either right so I, that, that's where just stop where you are Our people don't like what you've done a lot of people others say hey it's your choice like we said your choice do what you want to do but let's not make it sound like you're doing this thing for everybody else just stop it there. We know you like the spotlight on yourself, and you're going to have the spotlight on yourself. You got what you wanted. That's fine. Uh, but I, I agree with Michael Irvin. Keep him in with the group, but you don't have to mention him individually. Well, I would say we all say this. We say you know keep the spotlight. You know keep you know, keep the spotlight where it is. Do that. But then we keep bringing it up, and we keep asking questions about it. When we get answers we don't like, we wonder why. So this to me again, you know, we're using this because it keeps being a story. Because Terrell Owens is going to be a great name. I'm very curious what his Hall of Fame. Have we heard a lot from his Hall of Fame classmates? On how they feel no, about they this, said a word because about I it. No. saw the I saw the one gesture from To the other day on his Twitter account. He got a bunch of custom shoes made for all the Hall of Famers in his class. He's you know been tweeting about those guys a lot. I'd be interested if the rest of the class feels slighted or has any ill will towards this because I have a feeling it's probably not there. Well, listen, I'm sure that will be addressed when they're all there and they go through the motions of Hall of Fame weekend with the parade and the game on Thursday and then the gold jacket uh, dinner on Friday and then the actual Hall of Fame enshrinement ceremony on Saturday. I'm with you, Mike. Look. Do whatever you it's your it's your it's your, it's your choice. You can do whatever you want, but don't sit there and say you're doing it for anybody yeah, else because you're not. You're yeah. doing this for you because this is the way you want to do it. Golik and Wingo is presented by Progressive Insurance. Get your quote at progressive.com today. All right, we are here celebrating Major League Baseball and the All-Star game. And when we come back, the Commissioner of Major League Baseball, Rob Manfred will be with us on set. And by the way, wine up for everybody. Stay with us. Message and data rates may apply. When did it become okay for men to be lazier, softer? fatter we need to bring the men of this country back to greatness and it's easier than ever with ageless male max a patent pending formula with an ingredient that helps boost your total testosterone promoting greater increases in muscle size and twice the reduction of body fat percentage than exercise alone plus an amazing 64 percent increase in nitric oxide which can be handy in the gym and in the bedroom take your manhood to the max by trying your first 30-day bottle free 
Just pay shipping and handling. Not 10 days, not 15 days, but a full 30-day supply free when you text the word LIFT to 797979. Finally, a formula that boosts total testosterone. If your results with Ageless Male Max are too intense, please decrease use. For your free bottle, text LIFT to 797979. Text LIFT to 797979. Glad you're with us. Golik and Wingo, ESPN Radio and ESP News, live from the District Winery in Washington, D.C., where we are happy to announce the wine vats are open and the fun grape juice is flowing. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. But every once in a while, we get someone to join us on the set. And how about this one? Ladies and gentlemen, the commissioner of Major League Baseball, Rob Manfred, is here. Joining on, us on set, giving us the Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. First of all, thanks for being here, and thanks for classing up the joint. Okay? <laughs> for those not watching on ESPN News, Rob is resplendent in a beautiful Vineyard Vines polo golf shirt, some fine slacks and loafers. Golik is here in basically workout attire, and Junior's rocking the Hartford Yard Goats. So we appreciate I, you classing up the joint. You know, everything's about where you come from. I yeah. was so happy when they told me I could wear a golf shirt this morning instead yes, of a, buddy. a coat and tie. I was thrilled to, you know, be able to dress like You'd this. You'd be a little, so. little, uh, little spritzy with the coat and tie on yeah, right now. Yeah, huh? it is warm. Yeah, yeah, it, it's warm. Is. Yeah, I sweated through an outfit already. Three. 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 You've sweated yeah, through yeah, three. Been, Let's not, be clear. Not, not been pretty. Yeah. So we're glad you're here. Yes. Uh, to, what, to you, what does the All-Star Game mean? Everyone has their own sort of idea as a baseball fan of what the All-Star Game is. It's a chance for a break. It's a chance to see the home run derby. It's a chance for maybe trades coming up. When when the when we say the words All Star Game All Star Break festivities to the Major League Commissioner, what does it mean? To me, it's about celebrating our game. I mean, it's the one time during the year where we know we're going to be in a venue. Our players get a little break from the grind of the 162 uh, game season, and it's an opportunity to get our fans in one place and put our best foot forward as a sport. Yeah. There are a lot of times, like like in some of the other sports, where players want to t- sometimes skip the weekend and use it more as a break. I don't feel you get that as much in baseball. Why do you think? Well, I think the tradition of our game um, has always helped us in that regard. I think players are honored. I think the fact that they're selected by the fans, um, at least the starters. And then, you know, the second piece that people overlook that I think has really helped us, the second um, group of players on the rosters are selected by their peers. Right. And, it, you know, players care what players think of them. Right. And so I think it's an honor, and I think it encourages them to come and play the game. And, you know, our game can be – it's a great team game, obviously, but it can be played competitively without having, you know, six months of practice together to really be all on the same page. So the, the game itself is closer to the way the game's played all season long. And I think the competitive nature of this game in particular has always been in question, and we know we had the change now. We're home field advantage no longer on the line. Are you happy with the format of the current All-Star game? Yeah, I really am. Um, I I think, you know, everything is about how um, the game evolves. I think at the point in time that we we went to the home field advantage rule, we needed a little something to make sure that the game stayed competitive. We kind of restored that competitive character to the game. And, um, you know, at least based on the first year, which was last year, players are playing hard. You know, they want to win the game. And, um, frankly, intellectually, the home field advantage rule was always a little shaky. In oh, terms I hated of, it. Oh, <laughs> I can I just say, it. <laughs> you're good with us. Just, I know there may have been some other people from Air Quotes, another show yeah. that were all – I thought it was awful. Yeah, I was yeah. so glad you got yeah. rid of it because basically you're having one or two guys that may have nothing to do with the outcome of the championship determining maybe the outcome of the championship. You know, but it is, you, you think about it, it's kind of like ebb and flow. I think when we went to the rule, um, it made the point with the players that the All Star game is a marquee event. It's important that you go out there, play hard, and compete. They came back to us in the bargaining process. We don't like this very much. We said, right. hey, look, we're good. We'll get rid of it. But, you know, the game's got to be important. And I think the players have been really good to their word in that regard. Well, that's what I love about it because historically it's been a celebration. You know, the Midsummer Classic, it's been about the fans. And that sort of changed that dynamic a little bit when that rule was in place. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I hope we never lost our fan focus. Yeah. I, I do agree net-net that change has been a good thing for us. Yeah. And, uh, also, I, I guess it, to that rules around the All-Star game is Major League Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred's with us this morning. The idea of every team having to be represented, there's been a lot of conversation around that. Is that something you've entertained the thought of changing? Um, look, we talk. <laughs> one thing 
about my office, you know, we try to pay attention to what's going on in the field, what's going on with the players, what people are saying about the game, and, and, and I'm very aware of that conversation on the one hand. On the other hand, I do think the tradition of 30 clubs all being represented is something that's important. I think it's it's sort of symbolic in terms of the competitive balance in our game that's been so important to our success. And so, I, I you know, you, you do kind of put a black mark on a club when you say to them, you know, we're going to pick 32 guys from your league and, you know, not one for you. Yeah. yeah. So, so with that in mind, obviously, uh, we know what's going on with Manny Machado. He was pulled out of the game yesterday, air quotes, field conditions. In other words, don't get hurt, Manny. Uh, so what happens if Manny Machado was traded today? Does he play for the All-Star game? Does he go to the different uniform? What happens? Yeah, you know, we, we actually do think ahead once in a while. I think at this point, um, I know it's hard to believe, but um, uh, I think at this point it's pretty clear that he would play for the American League no matter what happens, even if something's announced. Okay. and we That know, would be weird. That would yeah. be, be actually kind of interesting on a lot of levels. It would. We know it would. Uh, uh, There's actually some precedent. Yeah. If you push me real hard, yeah. maybe I can tell you who the player is, but it actually has happened before. Do it. Let's okay. go. I can't ahead. remember. I just can't. Ah. We talked about it. I just can't remember. But it has it, happened it, before. It has happened. We'll That's the bottom line. We'll get our research on that uh, to, to get that thing on. By the way, I am for the side of not having every team represented. Just uh, I, I just feel, yeah. you know, it's – I. I I don't know. Just, just my reasons of, of – I know people say, well, in that market, then they can watch the game and watch their guy. But I'm like, I don't know, to get in there in the eighth or the ninth inning just to see him. It, 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 didn't, it didn't seem like it meant that much to me. Well, let me see, let me see if I can help you a little bit. Okay. okay? I mean, when you get done um, – and, you know, I've only done it – this is my fourth one, okay? So I haven't done right, it a hundred right. times. But when you get done with the fan vote and you get done with the player vote – right. The usual number that you have to fill, meaning you, you have a team who hasn't had anyone selected, it's it's just a couple of teams. I mean, right. you get really close anyway, right, so right, yeah. kind of no harm, no foul. And, you know? and I, see, and, and that's, that's kind fair. of about the game anyway. Now, now that there's no meaning to it with the, right. with the so just kind of do your thing, and, and, and that's fine. So getting to stuff that that's actually on the field, there's been so much talk about the the, the pace of play and such. With all with the different things that you have talked about and th- some of the things that have been implemented, where is that now? Are you satisfied with what's going on? Well, I think we've made real progress on pace this year. Um, uh, you know, I think the mound visit rule has been well received, and you know, maybe the, it has saved us about five minutes per game. The games are a little shorter. Uh, more important, I think it moves things along. And you know, the one we never lose track of. I don't think there's been one game where somebody has asserted, oh, if I had had one more mound visit, I would have won instead <laughs> right. of you, you know, which is, that, that's important. I don't Correct. mean to make light of that. No, no. It, it really is important. Um, I think we're doing um, much better on our inning breaks without impacting our commercial inventory. You know, we were running 45 seconds longer than the, the commercial load, and we, we, we've kind of picked that pace up as well. I think that's good. Look, all this conversation has to take place against the backdrop of one thing. Our game is fundamentally sound. It's a great game. 70 million people go live to see Major League Baseball. Another 40 go to see Minor League Baseball. There's something about the game that's great. Um, Having said that, the way I think about this whole conversation is, you know, we have um, really competitive people trying to win every single day. And that competitive fire drives change on the field you know you get the next smartest guy he's got the new idea the better analysis the data whatever and it drives change on the field you can't stop those people from being creative so the alternative that's available to you is every once in a while you have to step back and say gee the game's changing out there do we have to do something from a rule perspective to kind of rein that change in? Well, I'm glad you, you mentioned that as Rob Manfred is with us, Major League Baseball Commissioner, because we just had this sort of uproar from a lot of tennis loyalists, tennis loyalists about what happened at Wimbledon in the fifth set where it went 26-24, and then before that it was 13-11. and 11. There's been a groundswell of support saying, hey, maybe we should look into not having that go as long as possible in the fifth set at Wimbledon because it sort of upset championship weekend. And there's been some discussion – Uh, over the year about the idea of maybe not having a 17 or 18 or 19 inning game but deplete a bullpen and then for three days teams are trying to catch up and you talk about competitive people maybe looking at rule changes what what real discussion has there been maybe about trying a way to avoid that (coughs) in baseball we put a rule in in the minor leagues um designed to to shorten those extra inning games starting with a base runner on base we really did that 
for developmental reasons, right? In the minor leagues, the, maybe the most important concept from a development perspective is how you use pitchers, how many pitches they throw in a particular outing. So an 18-inning game, think about it, right? It just yeah. throws all that all off and, and, and whatever. So we did go to the rule in the minor leagues in order to protect young arms. Um, you know, I don't see that as a short-term change at, at, at the big league level. Uh, you know, people are are wedded to the idea of long games. Um, I, I think for the benefit we get out of it, that's one of those rule changes where the uproar <laughs> would, you know, outweigh the benefit. So I'm not huge on that. I, I think it, to the extent that we're having conversations and we always are talking about the game, um, I think the more important focus, and you can only have so much change at one time, is, you know, can we get a little more action in the game? Um, you know, have, have things evolved? Are the shifts a problem? We should be talking about those sorts of issues where off-field competitive concerns have changed the way we're playing. We should think about, you know, do we really want to be there? Um. And, I mean, the, you know, on pace this season to finish with more strikeouts than hits, speaking to that idea of defensive shifts, where is that conversation at? And is that a place where you've heard reaction from players, guys inside the game, specifically hitters? I think that um, – I think that where the conversation is is that among ownership, um, there is a growing sentiment that we need to have a conversation that's broader than just pace of game. It should be broad enough to include how much action we have in the game. Um, and so things like shifts, I'm not, I'm not saying that they're ready to make a rule on shifts. Things like shifts are out there as a topic that are being discussed. Uh, we're trying really hard um, to get – uh, the MLBPA to engage on these topics. Uh, we want to know what the players think about what's going on on the field. Um, and I'm hopeful. Um, I've had some conversation with Tony Clark about it. I'm, I'm hoping that he's out there trying to figure out a consensus among his guys so that we can have a meaningful conversation on these topics. Are we in an era, you know, we were just talking about PKs. Is that the way to do it in the World Cup or you just keep playing? Just uh, Trey mentioned the tennis. Right. We see the U.S. Open and golf went from a whole another day to a two-hole playoff. Right. Are we in an era now where there is almost too much change? being talked about in sports well yeah, i thought you were i thought the end of that question was going to be something different to tell you the truth big guy throw your curve every once yeah. in a while backdoor slider came in on you yeah. rob i mean i thought what you were going to say are we in an era where our society just demands these types of changes um and, and you know i think there's something to that um look it is a really competitive entertainment landscape out there um just think about sports right i mean we we talk now you know it used to be in the summer we got through the end of the nba finals and you know we kind of own the summer we have to compete now because the nba off-season stuff is so interesting to people and you know we have to compete and when you're in that i don't know if you heard lebron went to the lakers i did hear that (laughs) (laughs) um you know we have to compete and i think that um Part of that competition is understanding how people live their lives. And I I do think one consideration, I'm not saying the driving thing, the deciding factor, but one consideration is people have limits on how much time they're going to be, just because of realities, Mm -hmm. how much time they're going to devote to any any single activity. And so while, you know, there's always the competitive piece, you want it to be fair, you want it to be decided so the best player or the best team wins, you also have to take into account, it's those people that fill that stadium up that make it all go. They absolutely do, as Major League Baseball Commissioner Rob Manford is with us here on set on Golik and Wingo ESPN Radio and ESPN News, and we're reminding you to tune in for Major League Baseball's Home Run Derby as baseball's best hitters vie for long balls Supremacy, presented by T-Mobile. Our coverage begins tonight at 8 Eastern on ESPN Radio, ESPNRadio.com, and the ESPN app. Speaking of competitive, it is amazing what's happening in the American League. We have four teams that, in all likelihood, barring a collapse of ridiculous proportions, are going to win 100 games. Mm -hmm. And then two of those teams will have to compete in a one-game playoff to keep their postseason going. Right. Um, Is there any thought to the idea that, that that may be a little disconcerting when you have these guys that have put an unbelievable regular season together and it's basically one and done in the postseason. Well, look, I look at it the other way, right? Yeah. Um, and, and let me tell you what I mean by that. The reason we went to this one-game playoff is that with a 162-game season, you need to make sure that you're in a situation that everybody's playing hard right, right to the end, Okay. 
in the absence of that, the fear of that one game playoff, where are New York and Boston? They're both sitting there thinking, hey, I'm in, right? And if there's no penalty, no difference between my playoff status, whether I'm first in the American League East or second, um, you know, it, that changes the competitive dynamic late in the year. In contrast, I think you can be pretty sure that both the Yankees and the Red Sox are going to be playing like crazy right through that last All day in. to make sure um, that, that they avoid that one-game playoff. So I think it makes our regular season better. Um, and, you know, I, it's, it's interesting. I, I think I've said this to you before. Um, the president of Pirates is one of my oldest friends in the game. And if you, you think back, they had the two years in a row where the Giants got right. him at home. Yeah, right. And then um, the Cubs came in and, and beat him at home. And, you know, I, I was actually there for both games. And you know, I'm watching my friends sitting down the row. I'm thinking, oh, my God, he's lost <laughs> twice in a row. You know, and, and, um, and, and so I called Frank Coonley the next morning after the second game. And I said, you know, I've always been all in on this this one game playoff um but you know i've seen the air go out of the stadium in pittsburgh twice in a row i'm starting to think this may be a little rough and you know it, it, this is the kind of people we have running our teams. You know what Frank said to me? If we played better against our division all year long, yeah. we wouldn't have been in that game. And that's you know awesome. what? That's the right thought to keep in your regular season as exciting as I think our regular season is. It's just weird that we have the, maybe those four 100-win teams this year. But you can't need your career. No, no, you're right. You you're absolutely right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And I, I think that's a problem that in another sport, in the NBA, we constantly talk about trying to focus on how to make the regular season feel more important. Certainly not an issue here, but uh, one thing you mentioned, trying to constantly keep the attention of younger fans, people always talk about Major League Baseball's ability to market stars. Mike Trout and the conversation about you know his relatively under the radar status this summer has been huge is there anything you guys feel like you could be doing to market a lot of the game's young stars in a way that might reach young fans yeah i think one of the things that um we're going to be really focused on the second half of the season is trying to get our players to be more engaged on social media i mean it, one of the lessons we've learned in you know i can't believe i saying it four years that you know it seems like i got elected yesterday they right. go by fast but one of the lessons we've learned is you have to be on every platform you have to be where people, people are, are. Yeah. are and uh you know with respect to non-game activity players control that conversation i they don't, people don't want to know what i'm doing right they want to do, know what mike trout's doing and you know because our team is such or our sport is such a team game you know there's this nobody steps out nobody tries to get too big i i think our guys we're going to work with them in a way make more highlights available try to get them a little more active um to raise their profile and it's one of those issues where it, it, it ought to be a no-brainer in terms of cooperation right um the, the ultimately the player's brand being bigger is good for the player. It's good for us by, you know, second degree, but it's fundamentally about the player. Sign of the times, man. Social media, that, that really is amazing. So I, I'm curious of this, of how you take in a game. You look at fans, how they watch a game as fans. Like Mike and I, especially when we watch football, we kind of watch it as former players or analysts. How's a commissioner of baseball? How do you take in a game? Can you enjoy it as a baseball game? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, like I'll give you a great example. I was in Detroit last week. My wife's from the Detroit area. You know, we went to a game. I had no business people. You know, they knew I was in the stadium, obviously, right. but, you know, I didn't have any business people. I just sat there and watched the game. I mean, I love the game. I loved the game before I had the job, before I worked in the sport, and I, I do still really enjoy going. I, when I'm working, you know, and I'm in a lot of ballparks when I'm working, it's a little different thing. I try, I try to watch um, what each individual club is doing from a business perspective, what they're doing in the stadium. Do they have these millennial seating areas? Are they full? Mm. Um, you know, what does the mix of entertainment and food look like? And, and why do I do that? Because as you go around, you know, I got 30 innovators out there, right? And our business is fundamentally local. It's a little different than the, you know, we got to right, sell right. all those 81 dates. It's a big right. local business. And it's a great opportunity when you're in the ballpark to see what our innovators are doing and then you 
can cross fertilize those ideas. Cross fertilize. Wow. Phrase of the day. Cross fertilize. <laughs> Rob Manfred. Well played. We're going to steal that. One. <laughs> oh, totally. We're taking it. We'll give you no credit. Uh, by the way, we have an answer to the question. It was 2014. Jeff Samarja was traded from the Cubs. How could to I have missed that? Right. Yeah. How, 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 Notre, Notre Dame. Dame. So bad. I don't, wow. know, I don't know if you heard. They, they went to Notre Dame. All right. Uh, let, we were talking. Ask him to check. Okay. Exactly. Like, yeah. I think it happened with Trevor. Bauer, maybe, as well. I think that might have been... All right, we'll, we'll get a crack we'll, research we'll staff on this. As well. But the reason we brought that up, because Manny Machado might be traded during the All-Star break. He's an American League All-Star. In that situation, Samarja was traded from the Cubs to the to the A's, and he still was on the... Uh, he was ineligible for the game, but he still was an NL All-Star, and he was out there and recognized in a just a, a National League jersey. Yeah, it was just, yeah. I am a National Leaguer, even though I'm not a National Leaguer. Yeah. Well, and, you know, talk about... Something we've covered already, right? With the game not counting, a little more flexibility exactly in terms right. of letting a guy play. Exactly than, right. Than, exactly yes. right. Yes. Rob, we appreciate you being with Thank us this you. morning. It was the great Berkeley to be Baseball here. Thank you. Always enjoy it. By the way, get out of here. I'm going to take that shirt right off. I really like that shirt a lot. <laughs> Rob Manfred with us from Major League Baseball, the commissioner, on what should be a great celebration of the All-Star Midsummer Classic. Support for the Golik and Wingo Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Let's talk about buying homes for a minute. Because of rising interest rates, there's a lot of unpredictability when it comes to buying a home these days. It's causing a whole lot of anxiety with folks. Well, our friends at Quicken Loans are doing something about it. They're calling it the power buying process, and here's how it works. Quicken Loans will verify your income, assets, and credit in less than 24 hours to give you a verified approval. This gives you the strength of a cash buy. Then, once you're verified, you qualify for their all-new, exclusive rate shield approval. First, they lock your rate for up to 90 days while you shop. Now, here's the best part. If rates go up, your rate stays the same. But if rates go down, your rate also drops. You win either way. It's the kind of thinking you'd expect from America's largest mortgage lender. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Golic. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply. Based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data record, equal housing lender, license in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to GEICO. I should have done this years ago. Disclaimer, traveling back in time is physically impossible unless you know how to build a functioning time machine. Then by all means, travel 25 years back in time, switch your car insurance to GEICO. You could save a bunch of money. While you're there, please prevent your younger self from wearing that sleeveless tuxedo t-shirt, parachute pants, and glitter high tops to your senior prom. And at long last, rectify this horrible crime against nature. GEICO is absolved of all liability if you destroy the fabric of time and space. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Ultimate Summer Book. We still haven't bust out the IQ test. We're waiting around. Yeah, We're holding that, that ace right there. Saving it. We're saving it for the day that we really need it. And we don't need it because we got PK kicks coming up now. We, we got all the. We're here in DC, baby, yeah. our nation's capital for the yeah. All Star Game. Uh-huh. We're live from the District Winery here. Uh, by the way, the wine is open and flowing, and I've noticed the crowd's got a lot more uh, rambunctious little since more they loose, opened up. Aren't they? Little, little more since they loose. opened up the spigots yes. on those things. Uh, again, we are presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. We're brought to you by Amazon Prime Day. It's an epic day and a half of their best deals, and it starts today at 3 o'clock Eastern. Okay, technology is a wonderful thing, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes technology is not working. This is one of those times. We just had Major League Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred on the show, and uh, we were talking about what happens or may happen with Manny Machado, the all-star for the Orioles in the American League if he gets traded, and he said there was precedent. We found out the precedent was in 2014 when Jeff Samarja went from uh, the Cubs to the A's around the All-Star break. Uh, he didn't play in the game, but he was still acknowledged as an NL All-Star. And Stan Zirk, our producer, says there's been an update, and it's in your email, and the email's not loading. However, I can read oh, it here. It? Yep. Yeah, there it Go is. Ahead. The last time anything like this happened was during the 2004 season when Carlos Beltran was traded from the Royals to the Astros on June 24th. At the time of the trade, Beltran was among the top three outfielders in the American League All-Star fan voting. He was ruled ineligible to play for the AL All-Star team because he'd switched leagues. It was eventually added to the NL team as an injury replacement at the time. It was believed to be the first instance of a player being voted onto the All-Star team for one league and representing the other, and it's since happened with Jeff Samarja. So now you know, as they say, the rest of the story. Okay, I'm glad we got that out there. And all that said, it's not going to happen. Manny Machado's not going to get traded before the All-Star game, and then there'll be a moose point, right? Yeah. Well, it's, it's a moose <laughs> point. It's like a cow's opinion. It yeah. doesn't matter. A moose point. A moose point. Well done. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, so we do have a deadline coming mm-hmm. up today. We do. Uh, and it's a deadline in National Football League. 
Uh, today by four o'clock Eastern, if you don't reach out a long-term deal and agree to a long-term deal with the player and the team and the player that was tagged, basically you're playing under the one-game uh, franchise contract. Now, Demarcus Lawrence, Lamarcus Joyner, uh, and who else am I missing? Ziki, Ziki, Ziki Ansa, Thank you. Have signed their franchise tags, but that means they can still work out a long-term long-term deal. Le'Veon Bell, the running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers, has not signed that that uh, franchise tag because he still wants to work out that long-term deal. Uh, Mike Tomlin, the, pit, the uh, Steelers head coach, said he's optimistic that they'll have good news today, and that's wonderful for him. Uh, Adam Schefter, our fine NFL insider, says that's great that you have optimism. He's not buying it. Yeah, it, it is interesting how players don't like the franchise tag anymore. By the way, Demarcus Lawrence and Ziggy Ansah are both going to make $17 million this year, <laughs> guaranteed. So they're going to work out all right. But you, you understand in the context of the game and the market of why they don't like it because they don't have that long-term deal with bigger amount of guaranteed money. I don't know where, Mike, this is going to go with Le'Veon Bell. This is a position that is beginning harder and harder to figure out. The running back position, people have talked about it losing value in the NFL. I completely disagree. The running back, I think, has lost some of the value, but not the running back position. Because if you want to rename it to a slashy position, the true running back, like the Adrian Petersons of the world, that, that I think we have shifted away from that. It is Le'Veon Bell. You know, it is David, uh, or, uh, David Johnson. It is, uh, um, Zeke Elliott. It is those multifaceted guys who can line up out of the backfield. Kareem Hunt. And, and, and yes, yep. Kareem Hunt catch out of the backfield to where we're trying to figure out what their worth is as opposed to the life expectancy of a running back in the NFL. Well, I don't think they've lost value. Le'Veon Bell's trying to reset no, the no, value. No, no, no. I'm saying you know? this, that's what I'm saying. We're trying to find the new value of today's running back. Well, yeah, and I guess I, that's the difference is trying to say he's trying to set a mark, and this is something that guys like Saquon Barkley who are coming into the league who are in that mold are you know supporting and want to see established. Yeah. And for Le'Veon Bell, hasn't signed the tag because, like last year, he wants to be able to not show up through training training camp if that's the case you know last year signed the tag about five days before the season got started and plans to do the same this year and it's what they're going to do for the running back position in the future is complicated because Le'Veon Bell's not the perfect scenario in this because he's missed time due to injury he's missed time due to suspension it's not a it's not a perfect consistent sample size necessarily but he's been one of the most productive if not the most productive backs in the league my concern is what happens with him and the Steelers and what are the Steelers prepared to do with the rest of this Ben Roethlisberger window because if you don't sign Le'Veon to a long-term deal now I think you open it up to him not being a Steeler when it comes time for the 2019 season to be played. What does that say about the way you view your runway right now as far as getting back to and winning a Super Bowl? I, and in the in the bigger picture, even from the Steelers, we still haven't set a new mark for running backs. Correct. And we, have, we just listed the name of guys down the road who are going to be coming up at some point. And the highest right now has been Devontae Freeman, right? Correct. I mean, which is going to get blown away, supposedly, by these guys, but we don't have a new mark yet. Pittsburgh certainly doesn't want to set a new mark, but if they sign him to a long-term deal, it's going to be a new mark. So there's that looming out there as well. Who's going to set the mark, and what is it going to be for the future running back? And Le'Veon has said one of the reasons he wants to do this is to set the mark for other players. But to your point, Junior, about the window... If you think about it, it makes sense for the Steelers to get a deal done because, let's be honest, any deal that they sign is going to be in real money two or three years, right? So he'll be 26, 27, 28 for those three years. And if you sign a five-year or six-year deal with phantom money in it, as they all are in the NFL on the back end, what you can do is you can manipulate that salary cap number by front-loading a huge bonus, thus giving yourself more flexibility in this uh, last vestiges of the Ben Roethlisberger window to try and use some of that extra money that you'd be saving by front-loading that contract and diminishing the cap dollar to get some playmakers on defense, which they are sorely missing, especially after not having Ryan Shazier this year. Well, and I think if you're Pittsburgh, you're trying to figure out, because you drafted a quarterback in the th- in the third round this year. Mason you, Rudolph. You've put it on the radar of Ben Roethlisberger. Figure out your secession plan here. How are you going to negotiate succession that Succession plan, not succession. Plan. succession. That's a whole different Su- thing. Succession yeah. plan. Listen, that, that got into a big battle here about the 18, late 1800s. Not sure if you've heard of it, but <laughs> you're trying to figure out that that time in between. 
and you've already got Antonio Brown locked down on a deal like that that is going to end up being favorable to the team. I look at this now because they've got to figure that out for the team. And then for the running back position, as I start to look down the list of guys we've talked about, you can find a flaw in each one. David Johnson already missed last season with a season-ending injury. Ezekiel Elliott has had a litany of things come up in his past right now. Todd Gurley had the injury from college. You look down the list, Saquon Barkley is going to be what we thought Andrew Luck was to the quarterback market. When this guy comes up, he seems right now unblemished from the character side of things. He's a physical freak, and he's a guy we expect to fit this modern mold of the running back. When he's coming towards the end of his rookie deal, that's going to be the guy to watch. If he's able to hold serve, if he can stay healthy and do all these things, that's going to be the perfect case study of, all right, how high can we put the ceiling of this running back position? Yeah. It, where, where will that ceiling be by that time? That to, that to me, because I said, it said we don't have a mark yet. I, I'm waiting for that mark. Well, the Barkley thing is interesting because he may be the guy that outlives the current CBA. And the new yes. CBA is going to be done right. after the 2021 season. And remember, in the current CBA, the way it's constructed, if you're a first-round pick, that fifth-year option is looming for the team to pick that up. So basically, if you're looking for Saquon Barkley to set the market, you have locked him in basically for five years at a contract that is probably going to be below, if he performs up to standards, that's going to be below his market value. And then five years in, what will he be looking like, and what will be the value for him then? It's a huge cost control measure for teams, and it's interesting because an organization like the Giants, who's had an interesting last couple of seasons, is dealing with a lot with Odell Beckham Jr. right now, but traditionally one of the you know classier, better-run franchises in the NFL, you'd think they'd be one to try and work out a deal before that rookie contract is up the way we're seeing the Aaron Donalds and Zach Martins and Odell Beckham Jr.'s push for. Again, I, I, he's one I really want to keep my eye on because he seems like he could be on track to not have a lot of those blemishes that that we've seen the other top backs. Isn't it have. amazing? We're talking about a guy who hasn't played yes. it down yet, and we're not talking about the Kareem Hunt, who was a third rounder and set say, the world like, on another Alvin very Kamara, real option. You're right. These are going to be guys who are going to be in their fourth year when this when this current CBA runs out. So they're going to be pushing. Well, Kareem Hunt more. His has a four year deal because yep. he was uh, he, oh, Kamara was as well. Yeah, third round. So they're, they're both, both right rounders. at the end of their first year deals. Yeah. If they play, they already played one year. Then they have eighteen, nineteen, twenty. That's the end of their contracts, unless the teams obviously redo them by then before the new CBA comes into play. But think about what we're saying, and it really is amazing. Kareem Hunt and Alvin Kamara may be more beneficial to their own personal wealth by being third-rounders instead of first-rounders. That's exactly right. Now, they'll get short change in the first couple of years, but then... The lockup will be will be so incentivized for the for the Chiefs and the Saints to get that done. And quite frankly, if you're looking at it from an Alvin Kamara or Kareem Hunt standpoint, hey, wait a minute, I was making you know a couple hundred thousand, and now I can make several million. Looks good to me. And those guys may be better set up financially than a guy like Saquon if he performs. Who'll be locked into that deal for five years? Le'Veon get signed today? No. Get signed today? Can't see it happening. I don't either. Four o'clock, four Eastern is the deadline. Uh, I don't. I don't see it happening either. I yeah. see him playing on for fourteen point five million, which will be fine, obviously, yeah. uh, this year, and then we'll go from there. He'll make basically twenty seven million over the last yep. two years, which sounds great. But again, uh, you could make the case that he's outperformed that contract with the way he's done. It's Golick and Wingo. So there is a possibility that you could go back in time. There's a possibility that I could go back in time. Go, That's your question to me. Go back in time and, and and fight. Go back in the octagon. I do not have the ability to go back in time. No. Still hurts. It's still awesome. So so mean. <laughs> Sports Center brought to you by Valspar. Hey, just a reminder: if you're doing your deck. If doing your deck is on your to-do list this summer, put new Valspar stain in your shopping list. That way you can get all-weather protection and more inspiring color. Valspar exterior stain, only at Lowe's. All right, Golik and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN News, live from the District Winery in Washington, D.C. By the way, is there any, I just want to know, is there any sort of FCC regulation where we can't partake at this point? It's the last segment of the show. It's a Monday. Probably, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I they no drink idea. all the time on the Today Show. Well, uh, I mean, they throw it back Hoda. like they don't care. Kathy and Hoda, you got to love my they heroes, my on golden this. goddesses. They're they are, fan, uh, love them. They've love revolutionized them. television. Can I just I hold a glass? Can I just do sure that? You can. Yeah, I'm like we'll shaking the moil right Give now. I got a glass over there. Yeah, we got a glass or just something. You can pass that down. Feel good. There you go. Hold the glass. I'm going to. Hang out of that class. Mm, yeah. Delicious. Yeah, okay, well clearly done. we are winning today because yes. we're here with these good people at the District Winery on Water Street in Washington, D.C. Um, it's the All-Star Weekend. We're here to celebrate the All-Star Game festivities. So we're winning, but who actually won the weekend uh, when it comes to sports? Was it France, LeBron Shorts, Tony Romo, <laughs> Joker, Angelique Kerber, Jay Cutler, or Serena by just making the final? 
No, Who do you think won no, I'm going. I'm going to France. I mean, I, I, I really, I, I, need, I, I want you to go to. I literally want you to go I to would France. Love to go by to the France. way, I, in that outfit, I, I was, I was all in on the World Cup. I really, really enjoyed it. And France proved uh, they were the best team, and they proved to be the best team. And uh, I did enjoy watching it. I, I actually, I learned a lot. We had more guests on this year for the World Cup than we've ever had, and, and I think you're welcome. I think that's been fantastic. I, I saw. I again, I've learned a lot for a sport I don't watch a ton of, and I was impressed with with what went on. Say for some of the flopping but every sport has their thing uh but I, I really dug it and so i give france the weekend france had a great weekend mbappe had a great weekend and really is living a great life 20 and yeah. a half million dollars a year playing for psg in france in addition to now going home and becoming a, a a figure of national folklore after this i do have to give the weekend to shorts though i mean lebron james wears a pair of shorts to an nba summer league game 500 dollars a pop and they're selling like hotcakes you've got shorts on the set right here it's overall a very big time for sports figures wearing shorts like that see here like that. here is where it's all gone wrong for us as a society we just had all these wonderful things happen france claims the glory in the world's game the world stage the biggest sporting event on the globe yeah, it's football season hold now. on a minute uh you have uh novak djokovic coming back and winning a fourth wimbledon serena williams making the final angelique kerber beating serena for the second time in a final and your age is like, hey man, check out the shorts. I mean, Federer didn't check win, so who shorts. really cares? It's just this it is where it's sense. all gone wrong with your generation. Hey, listen, it's 2018, Trey. If you want to go back to 1996, I can work some things out with Rhonda and see if she can take you in the time machine. But if not, you're gonna have to live in the now listen, with me. I don't have a problem with the shorts. And the more power go to the shorts, that means we can wear them more. I don't have a problem with the shorts. I have the problem with you saying the shorts won the freaking weekend man they're great shorts come on sports because sports not because well, shorts you, because shorts really well, as we've sat up here hey, and talked I about just LeBron that, right that was pretty good thank you shorts get out of here Con congrats what's wrong with you congrats on fudging a rhyme scheme based on plurals yeah. but yeah. I, I just think this trey you look at it lebron james has been in the talk of the summer why should that change now Fashion, movies, because, athleticism, because whatever. Because of he's actual a, sports. He's an actual sport. Because sports. I'm amazed. You asked a question, mm -hmm. and you gave LeBron as one of the answers. Yeah. He gave that answer, no, and no. you just can't stop ripping it. Yeah, I agree. All right, it what's was, yours? It was nice the wrong choice. Who won, who won I mean, your weekend? LeBron shorts. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I would have to give it to France. Yeah. I would have to give it to France. Uh, because really, outside of the World Cup, the world the, you, the the phrase France wins never really comes into play. Yeah, cool. so you know we're just being honest about it. So that is true. But thank you. You you started to give the O, and then no, you're no, like, no, 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 that that's, makes sense. That's very true. That makes all the sense yeah. in the world. Okay, home run derby tonight. What do we like? So listen, you you, you want the hometown guy to win, Bryce Harper. You'd like yeah. him to win. If you're going to give me a dark horse, I'm going to go with Max Muncie from the Dodgers. But if you're going to talk about somebody other than Bryce, not the darker, how about Bregman? Alex Bregman from, from, the, the from the Astros may, may pull this one out. We'll see. Who do you got? Well, I was going to go Max Muncy. I like to ride the hot hand on this one, but I'd be interested. One of the Cubs. I mean, so we talked about missing out on the Yankees teammates. We have two Cubs teammates in Javi Baez and Kyle Schwarber. I'd like to see Schwarber in there. That's a guy that I think this Cubs team, as the shine on the Yankees has been so new, we've kind of forgotten that the Cubs used to be that big talk of the league. Yeah, absolutely. I'm with you on Schwarbs. Uh, I, I loved watching him play in the World Series when he came back from that injury for the Cubs in yep. 2016. As Junior is cracking open the bottle. God bless you. I love you so much. Oh, so I will wow. absolutely be all in on Kyle Schwarber uh, to win the Home Run Derby. And then we've got the game coming up. Thanks to all our guests that came by, hmm. including Rob Manfred, uh, the Major League Baseball Commissioner. Al Leiter right. was here in person. Adnan Verk was here. But I think, guys, to close out the show today, there's only one way to do it because it's our last chance to do it. Play that clip one more time. Hi. Hey. Enjoy the All-Star Weekend, everybody. Thank Junior's you. buying wine.